Yeah, buddy. That's a rib right there. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another cook video. I'm not going to lie to you guys. This was not the video I planned to put out. I already had a video edited and ready to go, but then I realized that Super Bowl Sunday is coming up, and so I had to throw this video together in the last second. So currently, I am in a hotel in LA editing this video. But I know how important it is for some of you guys who are throwing Super Bowl parties this weekend to get things right and to do something fun. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video as we put a little spin on a classic. After cleaning up our mess with the spilled salts, I'm going to make sure I get some salt on the actual ribs themselves and also some black pepper. Once we get our ribs all seasoned up, we're going to take them out to the smoker. Before you put the meat inside, make sure you take off all the logs that you've been cooking. This is something I like to do when it's really cold outside and also when your wood is super green. If you guys haven't seen my videos on tips on how to cook with green wood, I'll leave that in the corner for you to check out. And if you're interested in some tips of how to cook in cold weather, let me know in the comment section down below. We're gonna throw our two baby back ribs towards the back just because we're gonna be cooking a little bit hotter for this cook. I'm gonna let these ribs go on for about three hours at about 300 degrees. We're not gonna spritz, we're not gonna wrap, we're not gonna do anything like that. We're just gonna wait until they get nice and tender. The flavor that we're going to be doing today is a garlic buffalo sauce. If you don't love garlic, you don't have to use it. If you're a garlic lover, you can use way too much like I'm doing here. As I cut up these garlic cloves, I'm going to leave them into fairly large chunks. I would just recommend not making your garlic too small or just like too mushy because I think it's nice to have a little texture in the sauce. When it comes to buffalo sauce, it's always ranch versus blue cheese. Coming from the Midwest, I would say ranch is the most popular move. And the side of me that wants to respect tradition wants to go blue cheese. I'm a man of the people, so today we're making both. First, we're gonna start off making our buttermilk ranch. We're gonna start with mayo, sour cream, and buttermilk. Granulated onion, garlic, salt, pepper, and then we'll be adding our dill, chives and finish it with a little bit of lemon juice. And to add a little bit more savoriness to this ranch, I also added in some Worcestershire sauce. For this ranch, I don't want it to be super thick. The consistency that I'm looking for is a little bit thicker than the ranch at Wingstop. Next, we're gonna be working on our blue cheese dressing. First, we're gonna add some mayo, sour cream, aged cherry vinegar, or whatever vinegar that you have, a lot of black pepper. Blue cheese crumbles and salt to taste. This has a lot less ingredients than the ranch does, but I wouldn't say it's lacking of flavor at all. And unlike the ranch, this sauce I am trying to make extra thick. If we make the base too thin, when we dunk our ribs into the sauce, it's not gonna be able to hold on to blue cheese chunks. After cooking for about three hours at 300 degrees, these ribs are done. There's no spritz, there's no mop, it's just salt, pepper, fire, and smoke. But you really have to know and practice managing your fire so that you don't crisp up edges. Even at 300 degrees, it's not that hot. Think about when you cook in your oven. A lot of things that we cook are over 350 degrees or so. But for whatever reason, everyone freaks out when you cook over 275 when cooking barbecue. A lot of that has to do with airflow, how you build your fire, how you're inviting air to be pulled through the way that you build your fire. So a lot of those things are really more important than the actual cooking temperature itself. So if you're looking for more information about fire management in the backyard pit, I'm gonna leave a link to a video where I talked about that in the top corner for you. After letting these ribs rest for about 30 to 40 minutes or so, these ribs are ready to cut. Originally, my plan was to throw these on the grill after I had sliced them up. But after I sliced them up and I saw how juicy they were and how great they tasted on their own. So good. I decided that I was just going to leave it as is. As cool as it would be to get some grill marks on there to make it look a little bit cooler, I think it's more important that you serve something that's cooked properly. As far as buffalo sauce goes, you can never go wrong with Frank's, but today we're using Lily's Q. To a saucepan, we're gonna add a bunch of this Lily's Q's buffalo sauce, and to it, we're gonna add a bunch of the garlic that we had chopped earlier. This sauce already has vinegar and butter in it, so we don't have to add additional to the sauce itself, but what I'm gonna do at this point, it's gonna seem a little strange, is add some water to the sauce. I'm gonna thin out the sauce because I wanna cook that garlic inside of the sauce a little bit more and so that I can cook out a little bit of the rawness of the garlic. Without the water, I think the sauce would get a little bit too thick as it continues to reduce. So we're gonna start off by thinning out the sauce so that we can get it back to its original consistency. Once we have the sauce all warmed through and at the consistency that we're looking for, I'm gonna throw some ribs into a large mixing bowl, pour some of that sauce in there and toss them around to coat those ribs. We're gonna fill up two sauce ramekins with our buttermilk ranch and our blue cheese dressing, and now we're ready to plate. Oh 
Oi. All right, so we got our wings. Sorry, I've been, in my mind, I've been saying wings all day just because of the buffalo sauce. But uh, yeah, we got our garlic buffalo ribs. Um, then we got our blue cheese dressing and also our ranch right here. I also really like the amount of garlic that we put in there. It is punchy for sure, so if you don't really like garlic, then you know you can wean off of it or you know cut the garlic even smaller. But it adds a nice kind of like warmth to the rib um, that's not just coming from the spice and the cayenne from the buffalo sauce. Like this rib right here that has a lot of garlic on top of it, it's gonna be delicious. Uh oh, she's thick. Oh yeah. These two are very similar, uh, but there are a little more spices in here. I think the dill is really important, the ranch, but I do think that I put too much in here. So um, it does kind of, that dill flavor is coming a little bit stronger than I would like to, but I do like the chives in there a lot. I do like the dill flavor in there, but I put too much of it. And I think, you know, buying an entire box of, of herbs like you have to do when you go to a grocery store can be annoying sometimes. But if you guys have a jar of pickles or something inside your fridge and you can add a little bit of that uh, pickle juice, I think that would be kind of perfect for that. It was really fun to make our own sauces because I think when we are accustomed to eating store-bought sauces or sauces from certain fast food restaurants and things like that, we get kind of clinging to like, oh, that's what something is supposed to taste like. But I think if we continue to cook and make different versions of it, you can kind of understand what makes that specific place's sauce. For example, I know a lot of people like the ranch at Wingstop, which I really enjoy as well. Theirs is a little bit sweeter than mine, a little less dill. And the thought to thin out my ranch a little bit more was really because of the ranch I like at Wingstop. And you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. You guys are hosting a Super Bowl party and you don't want to fry a bunch of wings and you got your smoker going anyway. You got some room for some ribs and got a bottle of buffalo sauce. Definitely try this out. I think one, you'll get points for doing something cool and you still fill in the kind of like the requirements for a Super Bowl party by having something that has buffalo sauce on it. Do me a favor, put in the comments down below who you think is winning the Super Bowl. Do you have the Chiefs and do you have the Eagles and by how much? It's sad that football season is coming to end, but that also means my Bears are getting closer to their next Super Bowl after this season is over. Yeah, I don't know, hopeful thinking, but I like Justin Fields, so we better not trade him. So that's the end of this video, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one.